Alright guys, we've got a very interesting lecture coming up, and this lecture will coin a few new terms as well. So what we're going to look at in this video is this idea of fractional reserve banking. So the fractional reserve banking, just to give a very brief introduction, is the idea that banks only need to keep a fraction of their deposit liability as a reserve asset, as a, as a liquid reserve. So they only need to keep a fraction of their deposits. So when we deposit to these deposit money into these banks, they only need to keep a fraction of the, their deposits as a liquid reserve. And this fraction that they keep as a liquid reserve is known as the fractional reserve ratio. This is often denoted R. So we're going to look at the process of creating new money by this money multiplier using monetary base basis that can affect the overall supply of money. This is a very important concept to monetary policy because monetary policy actually affects the monetary base or the monetary base. This is another new coin that we've coined, that we've um, new term that we've coined. And the monetary base is basically all currency in the public plus reserve plus reserves held by banks with the with the RBA. And they hold their reserves with banks or with the RBA in their exchange settlement accounts. So the monetary base is what monetary policy aims to target when it tries to manipulate the volume of money in circulation in the economy. Okay, so what we're going to look at is looking. We're going to look at a working example of how fractional reserve banking actually works. So how we actually increase the supply of money without actually increasing the monetary base. So let's assume for the moment that the monetary base in the economy, so all the currency held by the public, is actually $1,000. And assume that one person or one person in this economy has deposited $1,000, or all the money in the economy, into Bank A. And so this represents $1,000 worth of liabilities for bank, but it also represents $1,000 worth of assets. And what they're going to do with these assets is they're going to deposit it with the RBA. So $1,000 worth of deposits with the RBA. But we, as we know, banks are also businesses, and businesses seek to maximize their profit. And so when they maximize their profit, the banks, they need to actually lend out money. So they receive interest repayments from lending out money. So although the banks are governed by the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority, or the APRA, so that they don't uh, lend out too much money, so that they are exposed to uh, liquidity risk so that when this person who deposited a thousand dollars initially says okay I want say three hundred dollars back and the bank doesn't have enough money to actually give that person their money back and therefore they're exposed to this idea of being illiquid so what the a APRA does is that they ensure that the banks are liquid so they, pr they put very strict regulation terms on banks so that they do keep a fraction of the deposit so that they maintain liquidity at all times. But apart from that, regardless, the, the banks would still try to lend as much as possible. And this is determined by the fractional reserve ratio. So how much they would want to keep with the RBA so that they actually do meet 
their financial commitments with their um, with their clients. So let's assume for this example that R equals twenty percent. So they're going to keep twenty percent of their deposits with the RBA. So instead of having a thousand dollars worth of deposits, they're actually going to have two hundred dollars because due to um, regulation conditions and due to experience, they're going to see that not everyone in the economy would actually withdraw all their money at the same time. And having $200 worth of deposits with the RBA, they can meet all their financial obligations. So what they want to do with the remaining $800, they want to loan this money out. And so when they loan this money out, let's redo this $800, $800 they want to loan this money out. Okay, so when they loan this money out, the borrower would actually have to pay an interest on this money. But then that's how Bank A makes its profits. So let's say this borrower borrows the eight hundred dollars, and then they spend the eight hundred dollars on a on a very very cheap car. And so the car manufacturer says, "Okay, I need that money, and I want to buy a computer for myself." And so that that person buys a computer. So $800 is circulating the economy, which represents the currency part of our monetary base. So this currency is circulating the economy, and until this person, or until we reach a person who doesn't actually require this money to buy anything, they're going to say, okay, we're going to deposit this back with the, with the banks, because we're going to earn more interest. So assume that this person deposits their money with Bank B. They have $800 worth in deposits, and this represents, again, liabilities for the bank, because the bank owes $800 to that person. So when the bank owes $800, they also receive $800 worth of assets. So again, they have $800 worth of deposits with RBA. With this, Bank B has the same... Uh, theory or idea as Bank A. They don't want to hold $800 worth of deposits with the RBA because they're not earning any interest in it. So what they're going to do is they're going to only hold 20% worth of $800, which is $160. And they're going to loan out, again, $640. And according to regulations by APRA, $160 is enough to maintain their financial liquidity. And again, they're going to loan out this $600, $640, receive interest on that $640, and eventually the $640 would make its way to Bank C. So this individual who eventually receives $640 worth of income says, okay, I don't really need to buy anything at the moment. I'm just going to deposit it with the bank to receive more interest. So they receive, so they deposit $640 worth of deposits with Bank C. And therefore, again, Bank C only requires, only wants to hold 20% of that deposit as a, as a deposit with the RBA, as a liquid reserve. So 20% of $640 would actually only be $128. And so that's the deposit with the RBA. And again, they're going to loan the remaining $512 with, to the non-bank public. And so this process continues on until this money approaches zero. And what we could do this is we can say that the change in the size of deposits equals the change in the monetary base plus 1 minus the reserve ratio, which is how much we actually lend out, times change in B plus 1 minus R squared, change in B, and so on. And this process is continued until it approaches zero. So what this actually represents is a geometric progression. And if we want to simplify it, just write about bank C for the minute. If we want to simplify it, we get an equation 
which is in fact 1 over 1 minus 1 minus r. If we simplify that, we get 1 over r. And this is the money, what is known as the money multiplier. So you multiply this by the initial monetary base to get how much money there is in the economy. So in this case, if we come out to the example, we have 1 minus 1 on 0 0.2 times 1,000, which equals 5,000. So instead of only having $1,000 in circulation in the economy, there would actually be an extra $4,000 worth of credit created due to this idea of fractional reserve banking. The one downfall to this theory is that in practice or in reality, at each round of lending and borrowing here, the non-bank public would actually choose to hold some of his money as currency. So if you go into your parents' uh, wallet, I'm not suggesting that you do, but you will see that they have money carrying in their wallets, or most of your parents would have. So this means that they haven't actually deposited the money into the bank, even though they're not using the money. And so that's a downfall in this theory, because the $800 worth of deposits here may actually, in fact, be only 700 The non-bank public may actually choose to hold $100 and not redeposit into bank, because they want to have a liquid form of money uh, at, at hand. So the deposit expansion process is actually limited by the fact that the public will sometimes choose not to redeposit to the bank. And this would actually cause the supply of money to be exaggerated or overstated in this case. However, th that is the theory behind fractional reserve banking. And as we can see, the consumption in the the economy is affected by the money supply, which is five thousand dollars here. And so, what monetary policy or the, what the RBA can do is they can target the monetary base to affect the overall money supply in the economy, and therefore affect consumption, expenditure, and therefore, by extension, affect aggregate demand in the economy. So that's the idea of fractional reserve banking: is that is the process of credit creation by the not by the banks and by the non-bank public above what it is already um, determined by the monetary base.